reflect upon the journey of my life, I am compelled to begin at the very beginning, tracing the humble origins that eventually led to the imperial throne of Rome. I, Gordian II, was born into a family of distinguished lineage, blessed with the bloodline of the Gordians, a name that would soon echo through the annals of Roman history. My birth occurred in the twilight years of the second century CE, in the bosom of a noble Roman household. Raised amidst the opulent halls of our ancestral estate, I imbibed the virtues of honor, duty, and dignity from my earliest days. My father, Gordian I, a man of remarkable wisdom and foresight, guided my steps with a firm yet gentle hand, instilling in me a reverence for the traditions of our forefathers and a fervent devotion to the service of Rome. From my tender years, I was groomed for leadership, for the weight of destiny rested upon my shoulders. My education was comprehensive and rigorous, encompassing the arts of war and diplomacy, the intricacies of governance, and the teachings of philosophy and rhetoric. Under the tutelage of esteemed tutors and mentors, I honed my intellect and cultivated the skills necessary to navigate the treacherous currents of imperial politics. Though my early years were marked by privilege and prosperity, they were not devoid of challenges. The tumultuous currents of Roman society churned with discontent and unrest, as the empire grappled with the burdens of corruption and inequity. Yet, amidst the swirling chaos, I found solace in the steadfast love and support of my family, whose unwavering devotion sustained me through the darkest of times. As I matured into manhood, I gazed upon the world with eyes alight with ambition and determination. The echoes of my ancestors beckoned me forth, urging me to seize the mantle of leadership and to wield the power of the empire with wisdom and benevolence. Little did I know that destiny had ordained for me a role far greater than I could have ever imagined, a role that would forever alter the course of Roman history. The year was 238 CE, year etched in the annals of Rome with both triumph and tragedy. It was during this tumultuous time that fate cast its die and propelled me, Gordian II, onto the stage of imperial power. The events leading to my ascension to the throne unfolded with startling swiftness. In the wake of widespread discontent and unrest, the people of Rome clamored for change, their voices raised in protest against the oppressive yoke of tyranny of Emperor Maximinus Thrax, although he disagreed with that assessment. You can find out his thoughts in his video. When the landowners of Africa revolted, killed the emperor's tax collectors and declared my father and myself joint emperors, the Senate confirmed our station. Sensing the shifting currents of public sentiment, my father, Gordian I, answered the call to action, boldly declaring himself emperor and raising the standard of rebellion against the corrupt regime that held sway over the empire. I joined him in these endeavors to rid ourselves and the empire of Maximinus Thrax. As the son of Gordian I, I stood by his side, my heart afire with the fervent desire to uphold the honor and dignity of our noble house. Together, we rallied our supporters and marshaled our forces, forging an alliance of like-minded individuals united in their determination to restore justice and virtue to the hallowed halls of power. With the weight of the imperial crown upon my brow, I embarked upon the solemn duty of governance, determined to steer the ship of state through the turbulent waters that lay ahead. The early days of our reign were marked by a fervent dedication to the principles of justice and righteousness, as we sought to redress the grievances of the oppressed and to heal the wounds inflicted upon the body politic. Together with my father, Gordian I, I labored tirelessly to restore order and stability to the empire, implementing reforms aimed at curbing the excesses of corruption and greed that had festered unchecked for far too long. We endeavored to govern with a firm yet compassionate hand, mindful of the solemn oath we had sworn to uphold the welfare of the Roman people above all else. 
Yet, even as we toiled to enact change from within, forces beyond our control conspired to unravel the fragile fabric of peace that we had woven. The specter of Maximinus Thrax and his forces loomed large on the horizon, and we knew the Empire would not be safe until we rid ourselves of the rival factions vying for supremacy and who sought to undermine the legitimacy of our rule. In the provinces, whispers of dissent grew into a deafening roar, as discontented governors and ambitious warlords plotted to seize power for themselves. Faced with the daunting challenge of maintaining order in the midst of chaos, I marshaled the resources of the Empire and called upon the loyalty of our legions to defend the sanctity of Rome against all who would seek to defile it. Together, we stood as guardians of the Imperial legacy, resolute in our determination to safeguard the future of our beloved homeland. But it was in the provinces that my fate would be decided. Only twenty days into my joint rule with my father, at the 238 AD Battle of Carthage, It was in Carthage in 238 CE that my fate was revealed as the spring scent of figs and mulberries wafted in the distance. For there, Capellianus, the governor of Numidia and ally of Thrax, attacked. As I found myself in the crucible of war, my resolve tested to its very limits as I struggled to hold together the fraying fabric of Roman society. With the forces of Capellianus closing in around us, I knew that the hour of reckoning was at hand. Summoning all the courage and determination that dwelled within me, I led our armies into battle, stealing myself for the ultimate sacrifice in defense of the empire that I held so dear. The clash of arms echoed across the blood-soaked fields of Numidia, as friend and foe alike fought with valor and ferocity. In the midst of the chaos and carnage, I knew what had to be done, the weight of history bearing down upon me, I stood my ground and rallied the troops, I stood as a beacon of hope for my loyal legions, urging them onward with words of encouragement and exhortation. The battle was gruesome, as history will no doubt record for posterity. We held our ground for a time, but alas, despite our best efforts, the forces of darkness could not be held at bay forever. Tragedy strikes with a cruel and merciless blow, and, as the armies of Capellianus continued their advance, they descended upon us with fire and sword. In the heat of battle, as the tide of conflict ebbed and flowed around us, I found myself face to face with the dreaded foe himself, Capellianus, his eyes ablaze with the fires of hatred and ambition. With a savage cry, he lunged forward, his blade flashing, the sun, weeping. I parried his blow with all the skill and strength at my command, but his fury was relentless, his resolve unyielding. In the end, it was not skill or valor that decided the outcome of our duel, but the capricious wounds of Fortuna herself. As I fell beneath the blade of my adversary, I knew that my time upon this mortal coil had come to an end. Oh, Pluto, be kind to your servant. And so, as the shadows of death closed in around me, I whispered a silent prayer for the salvation of Rome, knowing that my sacrifice would not be in vain. Yet, even in that moment of darkest despair, I took solace in the knowledge that I had fought with honor and courage until the very end, laying down my life in service to the empire that I loved above all else. In the wake of my untimely demise, the Empire mourned the loss of a leader whose courage and conviction had inspired countless souls to rise up in defense of all that they held dear. Though my reign had been brief, its impact reverberated across the annals of history, leaving an indelible mark upon the tapestry of Roman civilization. As the news of my death spread like wildfire throughout the Empire, a profound sense of grief and sorrow gripped the hearts of all who had known me. From the marble palaces of Rome to the farthest reaches of the imperial provinces, cries of lamentation echoed through the streets as the people mourned the passing of a beloved sovereign whose light had been extinguished far too soon. 
My father Gordian I, upon hearing that I was slain in battle, took his own life, ending our reign. Maximinus Thrax was someone else's problem now. But even in death, I knew that my legacy would endure, a beacon of hope and inspiration for generations yet unborn. For I had not fought and bled in vain, but had laid down my life in service to a cause greater than myself, the preservation of the noble ideals upon which the empire had been founded. In the years that followed, my memory lived on in the hearts and minds of all who cherished the values of honor, duty, and sacrifice. Tales of my courage and valor were recounted in hushed tones around campfires and hearthfires alike, serving as a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit in the face of adversity. And Rome would one day be ruled by another Gordian, a nephew. And though the sands of time may have obscured the details of my life and reign, my name would forever be enshrined in the annals of Roman history, a testament to the enduring legacy of one who dared to dream of a better world and gave his life in pursuit of that dream. For though my mortal form may have perished on the field of battle, my spirit would live on in the hearts and minds of all who dared to dream of a brighter and just future for all of humanity. And to posterity I say this, every generation has a mantle of responsibility. Every generation has to defend itself against the forces of tyranny. Rulers who rule without honor, who deride all detractors as traitors, and who limit the very freedoms one holds dear, is no ruler. They should be vilified and called out for what they are, not saviors, but enemies of the state and enemies to all free peoples everywhere. And as a victim of war, let me say this. War, perhaps our most notable legacy and worst invention. Other than advancing freedom over tyranny, like in your World War II, wars are a blight on man and earth. We should be stewards of each other and to our world, not burning it down. And remember, the Roman Empire didn't have nuclear weapons and climate change to contend with like you do. No one can win a no-win scenario. So let it be known that I, Gordian II, Emperor of Rome, may have passed from this mortal realm, but my renaissance spirit lives on in the eternal embrace of the empire that I served with all my heart and soul. And though the pages of history may turn, my legacy will endure, shining beacon of hope for all who dare to strive for greatness in the name of Rome. Thank you for watching. My father has told his story, and that's available in his video. Thrax also has conveyed his story in a similar video. You may learn more about me and the Year of the Six Emperors in our full-length video. My channel, known as the Renaissance Spirit, is dedicated to the pursuits of a just, equitable, and humanitarian world. Video topics encompass areas including history, politics, religion, personal development, society, culture, social and environmental justice and other topics of liberal arts and sciences including ancient Rome and the Roman Empire, which is a great comparison and contrast of the modern world. Topics perfect for the true modern polymath. The Renaissance ushered in a golden age and the pursuit of knowledge, knowledge both lost to time and yet to be discovered. It gave birth to the Enlightenment and the Age of Reason. Embracing truth, knowledge, and an understanding and compassion for humanity opens up the world to each of us, individually and improves all of humanity, affording us the opportunity to be better stewards of the Earth and to each other. The Renaissance spirit, more than just a philosophy or style, but a style for living, learning, growing and thinking. Please subscribe turn on notifications, and share. If you're looking to explore and experience what life has to offer, I'm sure you'll enjoy the other videos on my channel. Please peruse, and let me know in the comments what you get out of them and what other videos you'd like to see. But first, please take the quiz next to see if you're a Renaissance spirit. Live the Renaissance spirit.